Let's say you just got back from the car sales lot and you've decided to go electric. Car salespeople tend to be very enthusiastic about closing the sale, but for the most part, they don't know much about EVs. One of the first things a new plug-in vehicle driver has to figure out is how to charge their vehicle. Charging your EV should be no more difficult than charging your cell phone. Plug in your charge cable into the power source and then plug the cable into your phone. Assuming you're lucky enough to have a garage, driveway, or other parking spot where you can park your vehicle each night, this is the best place to charge your EV. In fact, this is one of the prime benefits of owning an EV. Not only do you not have to visit a gas station, you don't have to take your vehicle to a public charger to keep it charged up. So if you've got one of these, and one of these, then you can charge your EV at home. My car came with this level one charger. So there's just a regular 120 volt outlet plug here. And it says right on it in tiny print, 15 amps, 125 volts. So that's the maximum it will draw, even if I plug it into a 20 amp circuit. Then there's a little control box and the J1772 plug with a dust cover. Let's plug it in and see how it works. So I'm going to use this outdoor outlet, which has a cover on it. So I can see this is just a 15 amp circuit because it doesn't have the little sideways looking blade. So I'm just going to plug this in and route the cord. And then you can close this cover if you're using it in an outdoor environment. That way, if it rains, the rain shouldn't get in here. So I can see by the front display that everything is green. It's showing me power. It's showing me green here. It's also showing me something here, 12 amps. So it has a setting that it will put out 12 amps. Why 12 amps? The National Electric Code says that when the maximum current is expected to continue for three hours or more, the circuit can only be loaded to 80% of its rating. Since EV charging can be expected to continue for three hours or more, we can only load a standard 15 amp circuit to 12 amps. As a result, most level one chargers only draw 12 amps. One of the things you want to check in your electrical panel is what is the amp rating of the circuit that you want to use for car charging. Now, in my case, there's one here called garage outlets, number seven. So what I'm seeing here is that number seven is a 20 amp breaker. So that's what I'm going to be using. But I do need to check in the garage whether this shares other loads. On the Kia, the charge flap is in the front. So I do have to make sure that the car is unlocked and I can tap it. There are some dust covers here and there are two different ones. There's this one here for the J1772 plug. And then there's a separate one for DC fast charging, but we're not gonna need that. So I'm gonna cover this back up, keep the dust out of that. At this point, all I gotta do is pick up my J plug. I need to take off the dust cover if there is one. And I'm just gonna plug it in. You'll notice that there's a little ridge on the bottom and a hook on the top. And that's where the ridge goes and that's where the hook goes. So the ridge goes on the bottom and the hook goes on the top. So you can kind of use that bottom ridge to guide it, slide it in and make sure you seat it with a click. At this point, things should start happening in terms of charging. There are a couple ways we can verify it. On my car, there's a series of three lights and these tell me the state of charge and whether or not it's charging. In this case, because the car is above 66% charge, two of these are gonna be on. So 33, 66, and so it's gonna be somewhere between 67 and 100%. And the blinking tells me, according to my user manual, that it's charging. And if I get in the car, I get a little bit more information. So here it's showing me, this is the remaining time to my set point, which is 90%. It's gonna take about two hours and 25 minutes on level one charging to get from 86% to 90%. And here it's also showing me the charging power. 1.3 kilowatts and that's about what i would expect i set my charger to 12 amps and it's 120 ish volts so that would be like 1440 watts or 1.4 kilowatts there's going to be some efficiency loss so 1.3 kilowatts is about what i would expect for this charge so there it is that's really all there is to charging on level one again there's the outlet there's the box and you can't see the cord but it's going to the front of the car I'm getting feedback from my little lights here and I'm getting feedback here. If you have your car's smartphone app and you've connected it to the car, you can usually also get some information about the charging there. So here it's mirroring what it showed me on the screen. 
it's at 86% and now two hours and 25 minutes left and 90%. I can also do things like start the charge, stop the charge. I can set notifications so it tells me when it's done charging. So every app is gonna be different, so I'm not gonna go into the details, but this is a useful tool so that you can tell whether or not the car is still charging. When you're doing this the first couple times, it's a good idea to monitor this to make sure that your circuits is not overloaded and the car doesn't just stop charging. So it's a good idea to set some kind of a notification that says, you know, notify me when the car stops charging or if it's interrupted. And it's even giving me an estimate here, 240 volts, 45 minutes, 120 volts, three hours and 35 minutes. And now you see why level one charging may not be enough for you, but for a lot of people it is. But if you have nothing else, it's still worth doing. Now let's talk about how far I can go on that level one charge. This is going to be different for different cars, but if we focus on the 22 Kia Niro EV, the EPA estimate is about three and a third miles per kilowatt hour of energy. If we multiply out the charge rate of 1.3 kilowatts over a 10 hour period, that means we're going to get about 43 miles of range overnight. 40 some miles may not sound like a lot, but if you extend it out to 12 to 15 hours, then actually it adds up to like 50 miles and that's probably more than most Americans drive every day. What is this going to cost you in electricity? Here in Michigan, the median cost per kilowatt hour is 17.7 .7 cents. So one hour of charging will cost you about 23 cents. So 10 hours will cost about $2.30. Even if you fully charge a 64 kilowatt hour battery like the 2022 Kia Niro EV, the total cost would be just over $11. That's still way better than a tank of gas. Only you can decide if that's enough mileage for your day, but it's certainly enough to get you started. When the car is done charging, it will automatically shut off the charger. There's no need to unplug the car until you're ready to drive. When you are done charging, just pull the plug from your car and store the plug. If there's a holster or dust cap on the charging plug, refit that to keep dirt and water out. If the car's charge port has a dust cover or a manual flap, close those before driving off. Now let's talk about some of the things that can go wrong and what to watch out for. Again, make sure you're plugged into a properly sized circuit. Make sure that your outlet is in good condition and properly grounded. EV charging will take most of the power of a circuit, so don't share it with other high draw equipment and don't do this. If you overload a circuit and you're lucky, you'll trip the breaker. If you're unlucky, you can cause an electrical fire. If you plug in your charge cable to a wall outlet and it's flashing red, chances are there's some kind of a wiring problem. It could be an ungrounded circuit and any other number of things. Try unplugging it and replugging it in, but if it does the same thing, there's something wrong with that circuit. When in doubt, hire a licensed electrician to inspect or repair any deficient circuits. The charge cable for my Tesla looks a little bit different, but functionally it's the same. It's got the part that goes into the outlet. Now in this case, I have one that's designed for the 20 amp outlet, which is why it has the sideways blade. And then it has a little communications box and the part that goes into the car. So all I really have to do is plug this into a 20 amp outlet. Uh, I'll be able to see whether the charger is happy based on the lights. But other than that, it's exactly the same as the one for the Kia. So the reason I bring this up is because some chargers that you may get from the dealer actually have multiple inlet adapters. So in this case, this inlet adapter actually pops out and I can put in a high power adapter. So if yours has this one installed, and you have this end, but you want to charge on level one, one of the first things you're going to need to do is find this part that goes into a regular outlet, pop out the high power one, put in the one for 120 volts, and then you're good to go. What's happening here is this piece has a chip or some kind of a resistor that tells this unit how much power to draw based on the kind of plug. So it's kind of foolproof that way. Let's talk a little bit about extension cords most car manufacturers do not recommend using extension cords with level one EVSEs simply because they don't know what you're going to be plugging in and whether you're going to buy the right ones with the right wire gauge, whether it's the proper condition. So they typically tell you not to do it. So by all means, follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Uh, so I'm going to tell you what I do. I'm not going to recommend it to you, but if you are going to use an extension cord, make sure that it has the proper wire gauge. This one here, I can see it has a 12 AWG, which means American wire gauge. 
So I know this one should be good for around 1800 watts, which is the maximum you can do on a 20 amp circuit. Remember a car charger is going to be drawing 12 to 16 amps depending on whether you're running off of a 15 or a 20 amp circuit. Reputable sources like this one from Granger can give you some ideas of what size gauge wire to use for what amps. That's the main thing. Make sure it's in good condition. Make sure there are no cracks. Make sure that all of the plugs here are fully going to engage. So, and if you plug it in, make sure you seat it all the way. Check for high temperature. So come out after 15, 20 minutes, see if you feel anything that's overly hot. Warm is okay in my opinion, but if it's getting super hot, you don't want this thing melting on you, especially in the middle of the night. Same thing on the end that you plug into the outlet, which also goes for just plugging the EVSE directly into the outlet. You wanna make sure that all the pins are in good condition, both on this side and on the outlet side. This extension cord here, for example, you can see the insulation is starting to pull off. Uh, this is starting to be a little bit suspect, so I would even consider discarding this. Uh, also look for any wear anywhere on any of the plugs or whether it's the male or the female. When these get plugged in and unplugged too many times, they simply wear out and they don't make good contact and that's when you start having hot spots and potentially fires. So here's an example of an extension cord that's maybe been around the block a little bit too long. You can start to see some of the corrosion. It's been bent back and forth a few times. It's got this surface layer of corrosion that doesn't make a good contact. And this is the kind of thing where you're gonna start to get some heat buildup simply because you don't have good metal to metal contact. So I would advise to not use a cord like this. Get yourself a new one. It's worth the money to buy a new one with a thick wire gauge, like a 12 gauge, 10 gauge if you can. Although most of them don't make 10 gauge, that's, that's usually overkill for 120 volt extension cords. It is true that many people end up going with a high power home charger that plugs into a high power outlet like this NEMA 1450. However, a lot of people can get by with just a regular 120 volt outlet. When you're ready to look at level two charging, I recommend that you contact your local utility. Here in Michigan, if you are a Consumers Energy customer, go to consumersenergy.com EV to find out the latest programs, including a $500 rebates towards a home EV charger installation. If there are other topics you'd like to see in the EV Basics series, please put them in the comments below and let me know. I hope that was useful and informative. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.